Hi there, in this video we are going to talk about antennas and specifically antennas for the DJI Syndense remote controller. Now the guys who bought this remote for their Inspire 2 or M200 series will realise that they actually get two types of antenna in the box. The first is this usual omnidirectional sticks and the second is this thing here and this is the DJI patch antenna and they are including that with the Syndense at the moment when you buy it. And whilst I've been looking around the internet I keep seeing lots of questions about which antenna is best to use and is the patch antenna any good and is it worth it. So what I've done over the last couple of weeks is done a number of tests to try and quantify the difference between the standard omnidirectional sticks and the patch antenna itself and in this video I want to talk you through my results. Now some of these are not scientific and I'm going to show you some stuff I did out in the field as well and it's certainly not perfect however for me the results speak for themselves and I can give you guys a good opinion of which one of these I think is best. Now before we jump into the tests themselves, I want to give you guys a little bit of information first, specifically around the Syndense and the patch antenna itself. Now you may or may not be aware that the Inspire 2 supports both 720p live feed, which is the normal one, but it also has a 1080p live feed mode as well. Now that is currently only supported on specific Android and iOS devices. It doesn't currently work on the DJI Crystal Sky monitor so if you do have a Crystal Sky unfortunately that mode isn't available however if you are using iOS you can select it and what this mode does is change the live feed from 720p to 1080p. Now there are some downsides to this as well and the first of them being is reduced range because you are pushing a lot more data through the connection the range is reduced quite substantially and in my tests it's reduced down to a couple of hundred meters maybe five six hundred max. Now what I've been doing with these tests has been mostly on the ground because of the laws in the UK and I certainly don't want to be demonstrating anything that would be illegal. However the test tests do show for me some really good clear results. Now you may ask why you want to use this 1080p mode. Well if you've bought this remote controller you might want to use it as a professional in a broadcast situation because the remote does have an SDI output as well as HDMI. So if you were using this to upload to a large screen or maybe a broadcast truck you're going to want to use that 1080p mode to give you the best possible live feed because often in those situations the recorded video actually isn't the important one it's the live ear image that is. Also when selecting this 1080p mode you're much better selecting it in custom and manually setting the bitrate because the bitrate is how much data goes from the aircraft through to the remote controller and by selecting the bitrate it means you're able to then control the quality of the image and push it up as high as you possibly can. Now the tests I've done I've done between 6 and 10 megabits a second which is the maximum and the reason for that is when you have it on the maximum it really 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 does drag the range down and it makes it very easy for me to be able to tell the difference between these two antennas. The test I wanted to show was two main ones really. The first is how directive the patch antenna is because this antenna is a lot more directive than omnidirectional. It's not going to have the same 360 degree reception or transmission area that an omnidirectional stick has. And I wanted to demonstrate what the window of directivity was on this antenna. And the second test was the range and demonstrate does the patch improve the signal over the standard omnidirectional sticks? And the way to test that is to put it in to the 1080p mode and test it in the highest bitrate I possibly can and see which one offers the best signal. Now, whilst the reality is that is a mode not many people will use, that test will show which of these antennas are better. And if it's better in that 1080p mode, it will still be better in the 720p mode as well, which which most people usually flying. Just something else I want to mention before I get on to it. Some people have been having issues with this patch antenna. The way it now works is it now shows on the Syndense when it is connected. So you need to be on the latest firmware, but when you plug the patch antenna into the remote, you will now get a 
beep and you will see on the bottom of the screen a message showing you that it is connected. If you have updated your RC and your patch antenna to the latest firmware and you're not getting that message, open a ticket with DJI and send the patch antenna itself back for replacement because there was an issue where some of these antennas did not get updated properly and they got bricked in one of the earlier Syndense firmware updates. A last point on that is when you update your Syndense remote controller you need to have this antenna connected as well because there is firmware on board this so you want to make sure that you connect this antenna to the remote before you do any updates to make sure it does get all of the firmware it needs to get. Before I show you the test, I just want to talk to you about how I set this up. To do this, I placed the aircraft on a table 500 metres away at the other side of the field. Now, whilst this isn't the ideal method of testing it, I didn't want to be messing around swapping antennas with the aircraft in flight because I didn't want to end up triggering return to home all of the time. So I decided to do this test at ground level at 500 metres. In my opinion, it still gives a very decent result and what it does show show for me is how directive the antenna is as well as showing how well it works compared to the omnidirectional sticks. In this first one we're going to look at the directivity and that is how much you can move with the patch antenna before you lose signal to the remote controller. Now with an omnidirectional you would pretty much be able to go 180 degrees and it shouldn't really make much difference. However on the patch because it is directional there will be this view that it will work in and there will be another view that it will fall off. If I look at the patch antenna and point it at the aircraft, we've now got full signal. If I begin to rotate the remote controller round, it stays full, 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 and then it will drop off the cliff about there like a complete stone, and you just lose all signal altogether. You don't get any real warning of it going, it just goes off. If I then bring it back even a touch, boom, it reconnects, and I get the video feed come back, and as I straighten it up, it all comes back as it should do. By my calculations, you are getting roughly 60 degrees of movement. That is roughly what you've got. So you've got 60 degrees either side off your center line straight towards your aircraft. And that's using it at a fair range. And I'll confirm what that is later in the video. Okay, so as you can see from that video, the patch antenna directivity is approximately 60 degrees either way off center, which gives you 120 degrees of overall field of view of the remote controller. Now, as I said in the video, when it does fall off, it falls off like an absolute cliff. So if you turn the patch antenna, you tend to have full signal, full signal, full signal, and then it stops completely. And then even the smallest turn back towards the aircraft and it'll go poop and you'll get the signal back. But whilst it does show you that it will puck up off a wide range, you do need to make sure that you are pointing it within that 120 degree field of view, ideally being looking straight at the aircraft to get the best possible signal. Another thing I didn't show in that video was what it is like on the vertical axis and it stands the same 60 degrees up and down compared to the center line of the aircraft. So the way to think about it is if your aircraft was a dot in the center you would have a circle of 60 degrees all the way around that you need to keep this in to get the best possible view. The next set of tests I want to show you is signal and what the patch antenna works like compared to the omnidirectional sticks. Now I did these tests off camera at least 10 times and for me the results have always been exactly the same. Next I want to talk about signal. Does it improve the signal? Now to test this I have it in custom channel mode. I don't know if you can see this. I'm in theory I am screen recording here okay so I'm hoping you guys can see this. I am in custom channel mode on 10 megabytes a second, 2.4 gigahertz, 1080p full signal. Now the patch antenna works absolutely fine at ground level with the aircraft at ground level and it is picking up a good solid full our signal. So I have got it in both 1080p and 10 megabytes a second. So the patch is certainly doing a really good job at this point. If I now switch it over to the standard antenna, 
Okay, I'm now back on the standard omnidirectional sticks and I'm still in the same setting, 1080p, 10 megabytes a second, and I basically can't get any signal at all. If I then go into the HD settings and drop it down to six megabytes, the signal will come back. However, it is still not 100% solid. So from the tests I've been doing this morning, and I've tested this about eight or 10 times, it is abundantly clear that the patch antenna absolutely makes a difference. It really, really does. Especially if you're going to be flying it in that 1080p high quality mode with the maximum resolution. Now, the question would also be, why do you want to do that? Well, if you were using it in a broadcast situation, you were using it where you wanted to get the best possible live view signal. But when using the omnidirectional sticks, if I then switch back over to try sticking it in eight megabytes a second, it begins to fall off. And whilst it's working, it's blocking up completely. I really can't see it at all as you can see hopefully on screen and then if I go to the 10 megs it just shuts down you can't get a signal whatsoever it just goes grey disconnect now the condense or the sundense I should say is still showing a signal fine okay so as you can see in that video the test showed that the patch antenna does make quite a big difference when I was using the omnidirectionals I couldn't get it a Above six megabytes a second and even at six megabytes a second the image was still breaking up however when I went on to the patch antenna I was able to put it in that 1080p mode on the full 10 megabits a second which tells me that the patch does really make a difference now I've tried this antenna up down left right and center and my personal opinion is the patch antenna when pointing at the aircraft offers a substantial difference in signal over the omnidirectional sticks. If you are a pro operator, especially looking to use the outputs for broadcast or something like this, you categorically want to make sure you're using this patch antenna because it will give you the best possible signal. If you're just using the sedents for normal flight, honestly, my preferred antenna would be the patch. And whilst it's not quite as convenient as the omnidirectional sticks, it really does give a difference in performance. And whilst those tests were done at 1080p at the 10 megabytes a second, you will still see a difference in normal 720p auto mode. I only did it in those modes to be able to show you guys it in its most extreme conditions. Finally, I just want to mention this little bit of plastic I've got sitting over the back of the antenna. You might be wondering what that is. I created a 3D quick release bracket because I was fed up of using the screws to put it on and off the uh, Sendence remote controller. So to put it on, I simply slide it on like that, give it a bit of a push, and the patch antenna clips on and I can quickly just plug the plugs in, swap over the antennas, as I will show the now. There's that one. I'm going to go for that one. There. And that way I don't have to mess about with screws or anything like that. Now it does stand the patch antenna off a little bit further at the bottom, but it's a minor, minor thing. But overall I created that and that's actually on Thingverse and I'll put a link to that in the description for this video. So if you do want a nice quick way of fitting your patch antenna onto your Sundance remote, that is worth a look because for me doing the screws every time was a bit of a pain in the bum. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope I've been able to provide you guys with some info that shows the patch antenna over the Omni directional sticks and gives you an idea of what antenna to use and as I mentioned for me I'd be using the patch every single time however as I mentioned don't forget if you are having problems with the patch or you're getting really poor performance send it back to DJI and get it replaced you don't need to send the remote just the patch antenna itself thank you very much please do subscribe to the channel to support the video there are some links in the description if you are looking to purchase the Sendence or any other DJI product I would appreciate it if you did use those links it does help me keep the videos going thank you very much and i will do another one again soon